Chapter 4 Thus, I had learned a second fact of great importance. The planet the little prince came from was only just larger than a house. But that did not really surprise me much. I knew very well the great planets, such as the Earth, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, to which we have given names. And there are also hundreds of planets. Some of them are so small, it is hard to see them through the telescope. When an astronomer discovers one of these, he does not give it a name, but only a number, like Asteroid 325. I have serious reason to believe that the little prince came from the asteroid known as B612. This asteroid has been seen through a telescope. That was by a Turkish astronomer in 1909. The astronomer had presented it to the IAC, International Astronomical Congress. It was a great presentation. But he was in Turkish costume, and so nobody could believe what he said. Grown-ups are like that. Fortunately, asteroid B612 is more popular. An absolute Turkish leader made a law. The law was that his subjects should change to European costume. If they don't, they will die. So, in 1920, the astronomer gave his presentation all over again, dressed with excellent style and grace. And this time, everybody accepted his report. If I have told you these details about the asteroid and made a note of its number for you, it is because of the grown-ups and their ways. When you tell them that you have made a new friend, they never ask you any questions about important matters. What does his voice sound like? What games does he love best? Does he collect butterflies? Instead, they demand, How old is he? How many brothers has he? How much does he weigh? How much money does his father make? Only from these numbers do they think they have learned anything about him. If you were to say to the grown-ups, I saw a beautiful house made of rosy brick with flower pots in the windows. They would not be able to get any idea of that house at all. You would have to say to them, I saw a house that cost $20,000. Then they would explain, Oh, what a pretty house that is. Surely you might say to them, The fact that the little prince existed is that he was charming, that he laughed, and that he was looking for a sheep. If anybody wants a sheep, that is the fact that he exists. What's the use of telling them so? They would move their shoulders up and down and treat you like a child. But if you said to them, the planet he came from is asteroid B612, then they would be sure and make you peaceful from their questions. They are like that. You must not blame them. Children should always show great patience to grown-up people. But, yes, numbers don't really matter to us who really understand life. I should have liked to begin this story in the style of the fairy tales. I should have liked to say, once upon a time, there was a little prince who lived on a planet that was just only bigger than himself and who had need of a sheep. To those who understand life, that would have given a much greater feel of truth to my story. I do not want anyone to read my book carelessly. I have had too much sorrow in setting down these memories. Six years have already passed since my friend went away from me with his sheep. If I try to describe him here, it's to make sure that I shall not forget him. To forget a friend is sad, and if I forget him, I may become like the grown-ups who are interested in figures' numbers. It is for that purpose that I have bought a box of paints and some pencils. 
It is hard to start drawing again at my age, when I have never made any pictures except those of the boa snake from the outside, and the inside boa snake, since I was six. I shall surely try to make human drawings as true as possible, but I am not at all sure of success. One drawing goes all right, and another is not the same as its subject. I make some errors in the little prince's height. In one place he is too tall, and in another too short, and I feel some doubt about his clothing color. So I go step by step along as best I can, now good, now bad, and I hope generally average. Surely more important details I shall make mistakes also, but that is something that will not be my fault. My friend never explained anything to me. He thought that I was like himself, but I, sadly, do not know how to see sheep through the walls of boxes. Perhaps I am a little like the grown-ups. I have had to grow old. Chapter 5 As each day passed, I would learn something about the little prince's planet, his departure from his planet, his journey. The information would come very slowly. Sometimes it falls from his thoughts. This way that I had heard, on the third day, about the problem of the Baobabs. This time, once more, I had the sheep to thank for it. For the little prince asked me suddenly, as if captured by a serious doubt. It is true, isn't it, that sheep eat little bushes? Yes, that is true. Ah, I am glad. I did not understand why it was so important that sheep should eat little bushes. But the little prince added, And after that, they also eat baobabs? I pointed out to the little prince that baobabs were not little bushes. Baobabs, on the opposite, are trees as big as a castle. And that, even if he took a whole group of elephants away with him, the elephant's group would not eat up one single baobab. The idea of the group of elephants made the little prince laugh. We would have to put them one on top of the other, <laughs> he said. But he made a wise comment. Before they grow so big, the baobabs start out by being little. That is correct, I said. But why do you want the sheep to eat the little baobabs? He answered me at once. Oh, come, come, as if to say something that was clear. And I had to make a great mental effort to solve this problem without any assistance. Surely, as I learned, there were on the planet where the little prince lived, as on all planets, good plants and bad plants. So there were good seeds from good plants and bad seeds from bad plants. But seeds are unseen. They sleep deep in the heart of the Earth's darkness until some seed among them is captured with the desire to wake up. Then this little seed will stretch itself and begin, shyly at first, to push a charming small branch harmless upward toward the sun. If it is a small vegetable or flower, we should let it grow. But when it is a bad plant, one must destroy it as soon as possible, the very first time that one knows it. Now, there were some bad seeds on the planet that was the home of the little prince, and these were the seeds of the baobab. The ground of that planet was filled with them. A baobab is something you will never, ever be able to remove if you take care of it too late. It spreads over the whole planet. It drills clear through it with its roots. And if the planet is too small and the baobabs are too many, they split it into pieces. It is a question of practice, 
the little prince said to me later on. When you finished your own toilet in the morning, then it is time to work to the toilet of your planet with the greatest care. You must see to it that you pull up regularly all the baobabs at the very first moment when they can be identified from the rose bushes which they looked like so closely in their earliest youth. It is very boring work, the little prince added, but very easy. And one day he said to me, you ought to make a beautiful drawing so your planet children can see exactly how all this is. That would be very useful to them if they were to travel someday. Sometimes there is no harm in putting off a piece of work until another day. But when it is a problem of baobabs, that always means a disaster. I knew a planet that lived by a lazy man. He ignored three little bushes. The little prince described it to me, and I have made a drawing of that planet. I don't like to talk like a moral person, but the danger of the baobabs is so little known, and there is a danger for anyone who gets lost on a small planet. So, I am breaking my character for the first time. Children, I say plainly, watch out for the baobabs. My friends have been ignoring this danger for a long time, without ever knowing it. That's why. I have worked so hard over this drawing. The lesson which I show in the drawing is worth the trouble. Perhaps you will ask me, why are there no other drawing in this book so amazing and so powerful as this drawing of the Baobabs? The reply is simple. I have tried, but I have not been successful with the others. When I made the drawing of the Baobabs, I was carried by a large force of important necessity. Chapter 6 Oh, little prince! Bit by bit, I came to understand the secrets of your sad life. For a long time, you had found your only enjoyment in the quiet joy of looking at the sunset. I learned that new detail on the morning of the fourth day when you said to me, I really love sunsets. Come, let's go look at a sunset now. But we must wait, I said. Wait? For what? For the sunset. We must wait until it is time. At first, you seemed to be very surprised. And then you laughed to yourself. You said to me, <laughs> I am always thinking that I am at home. Surely, everybody knows that when it is noon in the United States, France has sunsets. If you could fly to France in one minute, you could go straight into the sunset. Unfortunately, France is too far away. But on your tiny planet, all you need do is move your chair a few steps. You can see the day end and the sunset falling whenever you like. One day, you said to me, I saw the sunset 44 times. And a little later, you said, you know how I love the sunset when I am so sad. Were you so sad on that day of the 44 sunsets? I asked. But the little prince made no reply. <laughs>